<laughs> Yellow. Okay. Oh. All I think that I can do something with this here tube. You have to excuse my bad lighting, it's raining out, so it's real dark. It's also why I'm working on this. Um, so my question here is, is this gonna melt if I have like a conveyor belt running along it, rubbing? I think it might be okay. Especially if a lot of the material I'm moving is gonna be wet. Or at least, you know, damp. I think it should be fine. All right, I'm gonna try it. Oh. Uh, which side? This side. Oh, the bigger one. I did get a little bit of chipping from cutting it with the solder. <laughs> and the chunk broke out. But that's fine. It's all right. Okay, while well, that fool's starting up, let me think about what I want to do here. You know, I think I can just melt the ends. All right, bread's on. And I think that looks about right. I don't know, good enough. Sorry, right, so motory thing goes here. I wanna attach a pipe from here that goes down the side, all the way to the other end. And then another pipe at this end that attaches to the little bearing here, all the way down there. I have lots of stainless steel round pipes. I also have aluminum aluminum square tube. The square would be a nice shape for this. It's much easier to attach things. Am I gonna have a problem with the aluminum aluminum and corrosion? Hmm. I used that square tube on this here boat. These parts here would be splashed by the most salt water and they look 100% fine. Fine, all these ones up here, they're, they're pretty well protected anyway. And what a cool roof. Yeah, all these, all these look, I mean, it looks like it's brand new. Except for, you know, some paint or whatever, but I'm not worried about that. 
I don't see any signs of corrosion on this. So I think this stuff should be fine. Well, that's awesome. This stuff is nice and light and strong and in great shape. And this piece is not a full one. I took a little piece off the end. However, I think it'll be long enough. 213 noodle units, so 106 and a half. Oh, beauty, that's a good spot right there. However, I don't want to cut the pipe directly in half because the pipe here will just come up to this spot and bolt into one of these holes. And I'll make some kind of reinforcement thing so this isn't swiveling on the end of there. Um, but this one only comes up to there. But the other one, I want to come up to the bolt for the bearing. So this side needs to be like two noodle units longer than the other side. All right. Yeah. So I'll just measure one this way. And I'll add, add one to that one, subtract one to this one. It'll be a two noodle unit. Good. Put the pipe right there. Another bolt up there. It'll keep it from. All right. Now I can touch my pipe here. Pretty good. All right, where's the hole? Yeah. Another guy. Okay. Here's my bearing and everything. So I just need to drill a hole in the pipe, put it here, put a little spacer so the pipe isn't hitting this. Great. Well, I guess before attaching anything else, I need to do the roller at this end. Hmm. Oh, I guess I'll just make another one of these for down there. All right. That should keep this 90 degrees aligned. Suckers go there, and it goes way down to the other end. Not entirely sure how much adjustability I need down here, but uh, yeah, I can move this. And there's another spot up here where I can connect it, you know, so it's connected well. And if every two centimeters is not enough adjustment, adjustment on this piece. I have a hole that goes between, so if I move the bolts from there to the other holes, it offsets them by, a, by one centimeter. So I can adjust everything down to one centimeter. And if that's not, not enough, I'll put another hole in here somewhere to get it down to half a centimeter. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. I'm thinking before I make the belt, 
I'll put this on the shortest length. That's actually the second shortest length. Because probably I'm going to have to stretch. So, yeah. Great. All right, let's see if this thing still fits. A little bit too long. belt. Okay, what do I have here? This stuff is really tough. I might use that. I definitely don't want to use the, the dark blue because I don't have that much of that. Mm. Let's see. Yeah, not that, not that. This I'm not sure if this is thicker than this other roll. No, it is totally, this is totally thicker. This is going pretty slow because I'm doing triple stitch, which does two stitches forward, then one back, then two forward and one back. Or you could say it does forward, back, forward, forward, back, forward. So on each spot, it does three stitches. One forward, one back, one forward. Now, why is this, what's the point of this? Why is this better than just running three straight stitches? Okay, if you have straight stitches, even if you have three straight, straight stitches, you have, that's what this, first stitches here. You have threads that run along the cloth. And every time there's a hole, you know, they loop around each other, but you basically have two threads running the length of the cloth. And if the cloth stretches more than the thread can stretch, the thread will break. But with a triple stitch, you don't have straight threads going all the way along. 
it'll go forward, back, forward, forward, back, forward. So your, your thread like loops back on itself over and over. So if the cloth stretches more than the thread can stretch, it can just kind of like uncoil itself a little without actually breaking. All right, let's keep going. All right, let's see how it does. All right, hopefully I didn't sew this all tangled up. <laughs> oh, we're making Mobius strip or something. All right, let's see how we Okay, that is on the loosest setting down there, so I should be able to tighten this. Yeah, I need to attach some wires to here. 12 amps of current, that is not that much. Uh, I don't need any fat wires. What do we got down? Okay, now I need some electricity. All right, let me just connect one of these batteries. It's not the right voltage, but should make it move some. Great. Hmm. How strong this is. Not bad. Yeah, actually pretty strong. thinking I might want to rubberize that top wheel up there, the top roller. Because when I put my hand here, I could stop this from moving, but the roller was still turning. So it just didn't have enough friction to, you know, overpower me. It doesn't necessarily have to overpower me, but yeah, there, there's definitely a lot more, uh, what's it called, strength that can be gained with some traction up there. Also, it's gonna go a lot faster because that was a low, lower voltage battery than what the motor's made for. So I guess, well, I'll think about rubberizing the wheel. Maybe I'll just give it a real test first. I gotta think about what I wanna do. Maybe I'll wait till it's not so soaking wet and muddy out. I guess I'll need to make some kind of frame here that can hold that end up and then this end and yeah, there's still a few things to do, but thing totally works, so that's good.